In every man's Nerf arsenal, there are a variety of blasters that need to come out. You've got the big primary, you've got the secondary, you've got the fully automatic blaster that's super fun to use but nobody ever actually uses it, and then you've got an emergency pistol. And this one right here is everybody's go-to. Pretty much everybody who has ever touched a Nerf blaster knows what a Jolt is, even if they don't actually have one in their collection. It is small, it is basic, it is iconic in design, it's comfy, it shoots one dart, and you can fit it in your pocket and make it disappear until it's needed. In fact, this design is so iconic that many, several variants have been released, including an entire line of micro shots that is just a jolt, but with a slightly different shell every single time to match some variant of blaster. I, I don't understand either. Well, actually I do. It's like Nerf Funko Pops, but that's not the point. This, this one right here is very iconic. However, this isn't the only emergency pistol. There have been many different versions over the years, including one that nobody seems to remember. The Reflex. And I've got some big thoughts to say about this little guy right here, and that's what this video is about. I'm sorry, Jolt, your review will come another day. I mean, I don't really need to review this blaster. Everybody knows what it is, but... We're going to be reviewing the Classic and Strike Reflex IX-1 today, because I feel like this blaster needs some attention. So just looking at this thing, I mean, there is one big detail that everybody's eyes go straight to. Well, there's two big details. The first is that the priming handle is literally as big as, this, as the rest of the blaster. It takes up half of the shell. And the other one is the grip question mark. Ergonomics on a Nerf blaster are one of the key components to making it good because if it's not fun to hold, it's not going to be as fun to play with. This blaster looks ungodly to hold. However, it's not bad. It is not bad in the slightest. If we take a close look at the Jolt grip, you can see that it's pretty much just the plunger tube with this rail on the front for your fingers to go into, and this nasty gap right here, which you really feel when holding it. It digs into your fingers quite a bit. It's not really ergonomic or comfy at all because it's just an emergency pistol. You're not gonna be squeezing it super tight and holding it through the entire game. You're just gonna be doing this for one shot, fire off that shot off, and then probably toss it to the side or throw it back in your pocket, or just reload it and use it again until you can get it another blaster, but this one, it really excels on its ergonomics considering how tiny it is. You have the entirety of the grip, which is very smooth and filleted, a nice place for the back of your hand to go into. The trigger is springy and very nice to pull, and it's got a nice space for your finger to rest on, and for your middle finger, you've got a nice comfy place for it to go as well. As for your other two fingers, my ring finger just kind of goes into this gap right here and fits perfectly right there, which is surprisingly comfortable, and then my pinky finger just curls up under it, and it works surprisingly well. If you hold it right, it is very, very comfortable and way more comfy than the Jolt. Plus, with this style of ergonomic design, you can actually hold it like you would hold a real pistol. You have one hand right here, the other hand right there, and you can use it pretty realistically, which is very important when you're going to be using this on the field. Let's also really talk, let's also really quickly talk about the top priming handle, because that's kind of the focus feature of this blaster. It is the whole top. You can get a nice grip on it, and it has a spring return, which is very, very nice. And I like this so much better than the T-pull, because the T-pull, it works, but it's not comfortable at all. It digs into your thumb when you're trying to pull it down or your fingers when you're trying to pull it down. And if you have too big of hands that ride over this rail, that can snap back and hit you right here, which is painful. Another benefit to this design, however, one that I don't think worked quite as good as it should is the ability to fire it off really fast like that. Now it works. However, if you go too fast with it, then it might not prime all the way. That one did. However, while I was testing this out, I noticed quite a bit of the time when I timed it really fast like that, it, the catch wouldn't go all the way, and most of the spring would, most of the air pressure would just escape through the, uh, the Smart AR. I don't even know how that works, but I guess it's an issue that I should bring up. Now for the one thing that I've really been waiting to talk about, the performance out of this blaster. Now. Here's the thing, when it comes to performance out of something like this, it's kind of irrelevant because this is just a backup shot. However, that doesn't mean that performance is completely out of the question. A good performing blaster is going to be quite a bit more usable than a poor performing blaster. I got an Elite 2.0 Ace and it barely made it to the zombie target, which 
Yeah, it was terrible. I had to take it back because it was completely unusable. And because that blaster's clipped together, I can't even fix the spring in there. However, the performance out of the reflex really surprised me because it outperforms the jolt. The only way I can really demonstrate this is if I do two shots from each blaster. So first I'm gonna do two from the jolt and then I'm gonna do two from the reflex. So first from the jolt, firing at arm's length. I went 100, that was pretty good. Wow, both went in 100. Now for the reflex. Well, where's the other dart? Notice the difference? Cause I did. Let me just cut it straight. We've got this thing. We've got, oh my gosh. We've got this freakish barrel attachment with a screen on it to measure how hard a blaster is hitting. So 45.5 out of the jolt. Now from the reflex, if I can figure out how to put this so that I can actually shoot it through the, the barrel attachment. 55.9. This is a blaster that is shooting 10 FPS faster than the Jolt, which gives you an advantage over using it on the field. Well, an advantage over using the Jolt on the field. And this blaster was released in 2007. My 2007 Reflex is shooting harder than a new Jolt. That's sad. Now, of course, because I got this at the thrift store, it could have been modified, but why would somebody modify a reflex to shoot 55 feet per second? Like that doesn't make any sense. If you're gonna modify something like this, you're gonna be making it shoot 100 to maybe even 200 FPS because the ergonomics on it are so good. But yeah, you get the point. There's really not much I could say about this from this point forward. Now here's the most important detail that I have left out. The width of the blaster itself. The Jolt is known for one thing, and that is being incredibly thin and incredibly easy to slip in pockets. And the Reflex is substantially thicker than the Jolt. So does it really impede? Is it uncomfortable to fit in your pocket? Not really. I tested this by running all over my house with both of these blasters, one at a time, in my left pocket. And the Reflex was just about the same as the Jolt. It weighed the same, it felt the same. It was just like a tiny little bit bigger, but not nearly enough to make an actual difference. And the trade-off, in my opinion, is absolutely worth it. You are getting a far more comfortable and usable blaster than the Jolt with a little bit more size, but still in a nice compact package that you can easily disappear into your pocket. Now, you might be saying, well, okay, that might be great and all, but this, as you said a minute ago, was released in 2007. You can still buy the Reflex to this day. It's just in the Elite Blue colors on Amazon and it costs about $20. If you are really going to look for an emergency pistol, I highly recommend giving the Reflex a try, even to this very day. Because Nerf has not upped their performance standards. I mean, they're still shooting 70 FPS when everybody else is getting 100 to 150. And so the difference is honestly night and day. Yeah, sure, you can get the Jolt more conveniently, but if you really put in the extra effort and go and get a Reflex, you're gonna be getting something that's far more comfortable, far more usable, has better performance, and will probably you will probably actually want to use it in a Nerf War instead of just having it as an emergency pistol to shove in your pocket. The Reflex is good. That is my final opinion. If you would like to purchase a Reflex, a link will be in the description below. The colors are going to be different than mine. Chances are it's gonna be the blue and orange version with the elite color scheme because I don't think it's even possible to find this yellow and gray one from the end strike line. I mean, I just happened to see it on at the thrift store and that's why I bought it because I've wanted this blaster for a long time. And I'm very glad that I picked it up because this is my new favorite emergency pistol and I'm going to use it in every single war that I am at from now on. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed, comment down below what is your opinion on the Reflex or any blasters that you would like me to review in the future. I will see y'all next time. Goodbye.